What do you think? What do you want? This? Okay, so the preliminary work has been done. We're ready to rock and roll. All the bills are taped off. The next thing you need to do when you're doing a run, know what you're, lay everything out ahead of time. If you have an order that's got a bunch of different things in it, find the similarities. I know I've got five white craws here, another one there that makes six, two more. So that's gonna be, uh, eight that's eight white craws so we can pull those aside right away and get those done so we'll have a run of eight and again it's just it's all in understanding what your contents are i've got a half full chamber of white my pressure is up but i'm going to be controlling the trigger on the spray and by lightly pressing the trigger with a higher pressure you still get good results. It still is an even coat. And things just have a tendency to go a little bit easier like that. And uh, just for time's sake, probably will not show you priming all of these. If I do, it's probably going to be in a time lapse. Pretty much we just want a basic cover, something that's going to make your other colors stand out on these. And a light coat will do just fine. Now one thing that I recommend after you've done this many primers is to really clean your airbrush well before you move on to layering and colors.
Uh, white is thicker, especially if it's an opaque and it's a standard Createx. There's nothing that's been added to this particular batch. Um, I read somewhere that even beyond beginners, if, if people don't reduce all of their paints that they're really doing it wrong and I, and I strongly disagree. I think that you should do what works for you. Um, I don't reduce a whole lot only because I really want the, the real true color of that whatever shade or color that I'm using to shine through. Um, I've experimented with higher pressures, trigger control, so there's a lot of elements that play into it, but the point to all of that is everything that I say, everything that you read, you should absorb the knowledge, but then take pieces of those applications that people are teaching you, including myself, and apply them to your own style. Something might work that I'm telling you, but something else might not, but something else that somebody else says might work. So again, it's just acquiring that knowledge and getting into your own rhythm and getting into your own style. My way is just one method of teaching you guys what I do, what works for me. And I hope that you can apply it in what you've done and what you're learning how to do with airbrushing. So that said, um, basics, basics. One more quick ad that I'm going to put in here on spraying at higher pressure, especially with primers, is that remember that what's coming out of here, it's also air. So you have a tendency to dry your bait almost as you go. Um, really decreases your drying time. Now the next part of this isn't that difficult either if you, so my rules in my head are light to dark and I have to figure out where I'm at. So I have eight of one that I'm going to be doing, six of another that I'm going to be doing, and then some odds and ends on this side of things, which I can be doing while I have layers going on and drying over here. So the first thing I have six of my blue lightning which is all chartreuse or fluorescent in this case underneath and then we'll wrap all of that. But I can at least put my base coats of all fluorescent on that first and then move on to I've got two colors that I'll be putting on the imperial whites before I do the crawl patterns on them. So we're going to go ahead and run the fluorescent I know, I'm wearing my Go, GoPro, so I shake, you guys shake with me. Um, but got to make sure my paint's mixed. And then take the time to pull out any globs from around the lip of the top of this. And then we'll go crazy. Keeping that high pressure, and we're just going to run it all the way through. Just like we did on the other. And I did not have to heat set the white simply because the pressure is fairly high, it dries in relatively quick time. My inside temperature today, I have one little heater running over here. It's rainy outside, so my humidity is up a little bit, but not in this room because I have my garage roll-up door down. Um, it's about 55 degrees outside today. Ah, I was hoping I could get through the entire six. That's all right. I am kind of blasting that paint out, but that is all right because I can add just a couple more drops in here and finish that other two off and then we can once this is in I can be setting these off to the side and going on to my next color on those eight so basically it's just thinking logically thinking about how you would set things up going from light to dark what is today today is April what is today 19th 20th we're losing track of days aren't we um, with this whole isolation thing um, today is right around, well, I know my birthday is Friday, this coming Friday. So that April 24th, I think it's a Friday. And today I'm filming Sunday. I, my, I was kind of brain dead yesterday. I was going to film all of this yesterday, and I was just like, I, I just need a minute. I need a day. So um, decompressed, prepped these baits, did some shop cleanup, and 
vacuumed and all that stuff so I did work out here but I also if I'm going to be doing a lot of filming in a row um, you can see that this is there but that's only there because I'm talking to you guys it goes right back on afterwards but since this is a lot I'll be breaking these filming segments up into just a little bit and moving out of this area for because it's you know safety I don't want my lungs to go to Swiss cheese for these eight the next lightest color I'll be using is a Maui blue and there's not a whole lot I'm just about going to use this bottle up and that's a long time coming I have another bottle of it um, but I'll rinse this out before I put it in the recycles I've got a big bottle of it now for this I will turn this down just a little bit the heads the tails just a little bit underneath so just pretty much three spots on that a little bit on the eye there's again there's not much maybe a little bit on that side but just hints you don't want to because the, the primary color on this craw is white middle spot and if I do a little bit less talking it's only because I'm doing a run and I'm used to like just zipping through the run so if you guys need to stop the video or ask any questions just hit pause and uh, figure out what you need to ask me as always I'm still at the point where I can answer all of your questions um, I don't think I've missed one yet if I have it's certainly by accident and I apologize but I do try to answer all of your questions on here um, and I'll do that for as long as I can but as the numbers keep climbing and I thank you I'm greatly appreciative of you watching these watching paint dry with me basically <laughs> um, but yeah I'm super grateful for my views and subscribers and uh, since this is all I can do for a living well it's not all I could do but um, this is what I do for a living is teach you guys how to paint and paint lures for customers and paint paint I'm an artist um, I would appreciate it if you smash that subscribe button and uh, help me put food on the table that way and the return is awesome because I'm teaching you guys stuff so at least I hope I am most of the time I find that it's we teach each other things down the line because I see stuff from you guys that's just mind-blowing like there was this there was this Lego lore the other day and I happened to see it I think on either the custom lore business group or one mind-blowing the things that you guys are coming up with today your your level of creativity is just really inspiring to me as a painter I've got some burnt orange loaded in here and with this, it's just a little bit around the back here. And then the orange goes on the throats. It's a, it's a brown, but it's a burnt orange, so it's a little bit darker than orange. And it's just subtle hints that work really well with these baits at least and they're at they're these guys that I'm sending these up to are hardcore walleye guys and this is the walleye just absolutely and smallmouth but um, the Walmart the Walmart <laughs> it's so early on Sunday morning the walleye destroy them I'm not gonna edit that that's funny as hell I can't speak you know guys I have like it's not dyslexia um, I used to, when I played music professionally before I realized that I was not going to be that MTV star, um, so I would have not fits, but like I would just get into like serious giggle issues with the boys on stage because, man, I would just butcher a word, and it's not intended. I don't think I'm dyslexic, 
uh, although it's questionable as to whether or not I have Tourette's, but I think in these times and days and stages, we all get Tourette's <laughs> here and there. Um, but yeah, I just, I can, I can scramble some words. It's like word salad. But it's not intentional. And I'll probably give this a quick heat set off camera. But yeah, words, uh, they don't always elude me. Like, I was never afraid to speak in class. I, in fact, um, in school, I was always one of the first to volunteer because when you volunteer, you know it's over. You don't have to sit there and just wait and wait and wait and get more pensive. And, uh, you know, you just, just get it over with. On these eight, the next thing we're going to be doing is adding detail jet black. It's the wicked line, runs a little bit smoother than the Createx paints does. So generally for detailing and lining, if I'm gonna use black and not the detail black magenta, which this particular color pattern, I do use black. I like the wicked better. Just my personal preference. Doesn't mean Createx is bad. You can pull it off either way. We're doing detail lines. These are going to be the cross stencils. So, well, my version of the cross stencils. Pull these. I moved all this off to the side since I have so many to deal with today. I've got a few pieces that I can pull from. That these are all hand cut by me. I like this one. I've been kind of. This is the newest one I've been using but I have others that I can choose from as well. This is the one that I cut for the collar. It's just a V notch. And then I've made little, I guess you guys can see that. Let me see if I can show it to you a little bit better. Let's see if you can see it on this. So there are indentations in this, little slits that I've made with an X-Acto knife on that V. And that is what I use for the neck, collar, and my back lines. And I always say on every crawl that I've ever done for you guys, always do the back first, the spine of the bait, and then it's so much easier to line up your sides off of the back because you have a middle point to go on both sides. So I like this because it's flexible, this little thin cardboard. It lasts this piece I've had for about a year. So that's helpful, I think, for you guys to know that you can use these over and over. Helps if you wipe them down. So having something like this definitely works out. And always, again, spray into the stencil. And then just going down the line. I think I've shown you guys, I did a run of Rayburn Reds, or at least my version of Rayburn Red, last year maybe, year before. It was in a spray session. Um, so that kind of gave you a general idea of what I do when I'm doing runs. Now, now that I've done the neck, before I get into the back piece, I am going to wipe this down. Because I just, I don't want that build up on there. I don't care if my hands get a little bit messy. But the whole point is to not have all that junk building up on here. And then I'll take the angle of these helping hands. Probably my biggest tool that I use is these helping hands. Especially if you're doing more than one. Um, it certainly helps. Literally. I, no pun intended. Now I'm going to move towards me and away from the paint. You don't want to put paint over itself on these because you'll, it'll get messy. So always move away from the paint. And on these, I think I make five. I do five on these, two, I think it's five, three, four, yeah, that's right, five. On the smaller ones, it's four which would be those SP100s, which I'm waiting on an order of. And 
and then just run straight down the line. And try and keep them as even as possible. And it's okay for a little bit of a burst to go on to this because you want that shading. You just don't want it super heavy. And the last two. The next thing that I do could be critical for you guys if you're just starting to do runs or you're starting to figure out stuff. I don't always do this because I don't have to. I'm, I'm pretty decent. But if you just want to use one side at a time and you have a run going on, I take the right hand side and I flip it. And what that's going to do when I lay these down to do the side parts, the segments of the stencil, is it's going to allow me to do the same side on each bait at once. So now, now that this is, hopefully that will stay on, the next thing I do is I set these down. I spread them out. And I do that with all of them. But you'll notice it's the same side. Now that I've flipped the one, and that's just, it's just a little trick that I use to help me keep my speed up. And that way I also only use one side. I don't worry about flipping it and getting it messy. I'm actually done with this collar piece now. So the way I would run this, let's see, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use this one. The way I will run this to show you guys, and we'll do it on one first and then I'll do it probably in a time lapse since it's going to be a little bit tricky to do it quickly on camera. I don't want you to be sitting here for like a couple of minutes watching me. I can move through it pretty quick, but I'm going to do the collar. Finish that collar off. And then with these, it's backwards. Most of the time when I'm doing cross stencils, I run from the front back. On these, I reverse it. So it looks like that. And then you just flip it, and you're working on the same side on the other side. And you can get through a run pretty quick. But you notice, since I have this top guide, it makes it so much easier to line up the sides. All you guys should be doing that. Or maybe you have your own method that works for you. Again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just showing you what works best for me. So now I have one complete side, and I can just run that down for the rest of the, for the lures. So I'm going to time lapse you guys out on that. Now we flip them back. This part should go relatively easy as well. Just want to 
want to make sure that you have everything lined up together. And now we get to do the belly segments, which also are not that difficult. So I'm going to slide these back just a little bit. Probably going to readjust my camera, which is probably going to be annoying. It's an annoying sound. I know because I edit it before you guys ever see it. I'm going to slide that up just a little bit. That should be okay. You guys should stay in frame. All right for that. It's just a matter of pulling this forward. Now, if you've been doing quite a bit, you also want to check the the fluency of how your paint's spraying, because we've done eight of these so far. But um, fairly simple. Find a straight line. And just put in your belly segments. And on these on these jerk baits. It's not that bad as far as having to meet the lines up like it is on a rounder. Because this, this particular style, this is from Dinger, you guys always ask me where this stuff comes from, um, is flat. So if you notice, there's not a whole lot of line breakage, maybe just a little bit right there that we'll add in. But generally, you can put those lines in and it meets up to the cross segment on the other side. So then we can just blast through this and time lapse you guys. And I can see that this is starting to spit a little bit, which is okay because we can use it as shading on this belly, but um, it'll need a good cleaning after this. Now, you guys may have other methods of doing this and yours may be faster. I'm curious, always. What are you guys doing differently in your runs than I am? And just come back and check. Now there's a little bit of line breakage on this side. And just match that up. That one maybe. Flip it over to the other side. Yeah, there's some line breakage on that one. When I say line breakage, I'm just talking about you want the segments to kind of meet up. You don't have to hardly put any pressure on this trigger. Because you just want to shade it. You don't want to blast paint. So those look good. A little bit. See, my left side is always my weakest side as I'm spraying. So I always have to try and be mindful of that. And I want to go back and look at how everything turned out. That's okay. That's okay. This one is just touching up a little bit. Low pressure. Barely hold down on the trigger until you guys can get paint coming out. And those, those shading lines will appear. All right. 
And then double check on this, same thing. A lot of it has to do with where I put the lines down on the sides, on the cross stencils. But generally there's not a whole lot left to do at this point in the game. Double check this side. That one looks decent. This one's got a little bit of line breakage. Not too bad, this one. Go all the way up and there you have it. I'm gonna put these eyes in while I still have black in the chamber. And since we kind of have them lined up, I can just hit a drop of super glue in each one, do one side, and then flip it. Always, always, always add super glue. It's just much more professional to finish it that way. And just make sure you don't have any on your hands. I'm famous for it, y'all know that. Super glue can be miles from me and I still manage to figure out how to glue my fingers together. It never fails. You generally have, from the time that you put super glue onto a eye socket to the time you can dip this bait in clear coat, a couple of minutes of dry time. I like to give it a little bit of time as we go there. The time that you actually have to work with an eye, however, like if it goes in sideways, is much less, 10 to 15 seconds for most super glues. Now, I have not tested all of them. Now we're just gonna flip it. Get rid of that, run this. One drop at a time. Come on, get in there. And then just do the same thing on the other side. And the reason that I still have black in the chamber is because these are not gonna stay like this. Although I don't think the fish care, since this is a craw pattern, we're gonna put black over this. So these eyes are gonna be 100% black. Come on. So the actual elapsed time, if I were not filming and instructing on how fast I could do these is a 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Not including the eyes, because that's a little tedious. And I, I don't have the best luck with super glue. I just don't. Okay, they're in. Now, I wanna make sure, I'm gonna grab some scrap here. There we go. And now, 
for our final trick. Get them black. And again, we don't need the holders for this part because we're just accenting the eyes. Now we gotta take the tape off and do all that stuff. We'll do that all at once. Now we gotta get through this. I'm gonna go ahead and mesh all this stuff up off camera. Um, that's probably the hardest part about all that is getting all the mesh on these. You know, I think with this next six, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing that we did with those. I'm just gonna do it ahead of time because these are not gonna have normal regular eyes because it's not a normal regular bait. One thing I'm noticing as I'm doing this is that there's a little bit of paint residual coming off, so these might not be 100% dry. So we're gonna go ahead and heat set them after I finish. See, I did it again. It's super glue. It doesn't matter actually on these because they're gonna be painted over, but. Now the question becomes if I have long enough pieces already cut or if I'm going to have to cut new. Might have to cut new on some of this stuff. I think I can pull off like three maybe that are long enough. Double that one. Is that doubled? That looks doubled. It's not. Okay. That's three. I think everything else is short. Matter of fact, I'm certain that it is. So I got three set to go and three I gotta cut. I always keep a, a mess of it on hand for smaller stuff like crankbaits. You can get multiple uses out of this stuff. It's called sisal mesh, Thule. Metallic wire wrap. There's, it goes under a bunch of different names. Right now they're calling it all Sissel. S-I-S-A-L. Sierra Indigo Sierra Alpha Lima. I trust that all of you guys know how to do wrap. So we'll do that off camera because that's boring and tedious.
So I brought you guys back out of time lapse because we have completed all of the colors that we need to do in what I just call the blue lightning. And once the mesh is off of this and we get this heat set done, then you're going to see there's streaks of, of um, chartreuse and fluorescent yellow that are going to be burst through this, this lure, which is why I call it what I do. Kind of looks like lightning. And I'm getting ready to do um, 10 pieces for somebody else in uh, black and red which is also a very cool way to use this mesh so let me go ahead and heat set all these and then we'll be right back for the reveal on this bait and there may be some slight variances in how they're sprayed because each of them is custom sprayed they're not sprayed in a line or on a rack um, that's the beauty of a custom painter is that we get a little bit more discretion and a little bit more freedom in how to do it. This is the blue lightning. And on this, if I do anything with the eyes, it's just going to be a little bit of an accent. I don't know that I want them black. Um, to be honest, I actually might want their opposite. Uh, on the color wheel, it's not exact opposite. So blue and red and yellow are the primary colors in the color wheel. White and black um, are opposites and they're the neutrals on the end, one being absent of color and one being full of color. So that's just my little explanation, but um, blue and and orange are very close opposites on the color wheel as well. So I might accent the eyes with just a little bit of orange. I may not. I might leave them as they are. Um, I really do like putting the eyes on these ahead of time because the one thing about this particular jerkbait style, the eyes are different and they don't come in a bunch of different colors, so anything that you do with them has got to be either while the bait's being sprayed or after the, the fact. And then something like this, it's almost cool to have the eyes be the same color as the bait. A lot of people think that that detracts from a target that the fish, but for walleyes, folks, they're not looking at the eyes. They're looking at the crazy color patterns. They have a propensity to love wild colors, at least in my experience and in most of the anglers that I serve. Well, you guys know that. Bright, bright, wild colors for walleye. But smallmouth like them, too. So we're almost coming down the home stretch on these. And this is that four, I did pretty much four shades of blue on this. Started with that light sky blue and then added in some Maui, added in some ultramarine and bright and then finished with a very deep blue. And on a couple of them, I finished with um, that detail black magenta, but I actually like the, the deep blue better than the purple black. It seems to show up better as a contrast. So that's what we did on these. And you guys, while you guys are in time lapse, I was talking with my Uncle Howard, today being a Sunday, I try and reach out to all my family. And this morning he called me, so it was really good to hear his voice. I was supposed to take a trip out there in May to see everybody. And unfortunately, with all this crazy COVID stuff going on, um, that has not happened. So hopefully towards the middle of the year or the end of the year, I will be able to get on that plane and go see everybody. That is my hope. I have decided on this one that I'm going to go ahead and leave the eyes as they are, the way they were sprayed with the mesh. I think they kind of look cool. And for a walleye bait, or a smallmouth, because they're going to be used for both, and they are both very effective patterns on it, um, on the species, it's just, yeah, something different. That's the one thing about these, 
on these SPs is that the eyes do not come in different colors like most round eyes do. These are very uh, mold specific eyes to this bait as are all of the Duo Replica pressings. So we're going to leave it alone. We have brought you guys out of the time lapse and um, we've used four colors aside from the yellow on this particular one we used four shades of blue and I really like the effect better when you shoot down and you create that 3D effect like you can really see it on this one um, pretty well but I like it with the dark blue it's actually called deep blue was my final on this and it's just a createx transparent but I like it better than like a purple or or the black magenta that I so often use only because I think that this shows off the lightning effect a little bit better okay guys and gals I hope that I've been able to teach you a couple of things about doing a run and doing some quantity if you guys are starting to get into doing more than one or two of the same bait this is just how I simplify it for myself. I try and make it as easy as I can when I'm doing multiples of the same pattern. Uh, I still run light to dark. I usually start out with a white primer unless it's a specific pattern that calls for transparency more than normal. Um, usually it's a white base and you can hit all those the same just like I'm getting ready to do with these oddball ones here. But uh, six of these, eight of the Imperial White Craw, which does keep morphing and, and uh, evolving, but for this particular run, the boys wanted it exactly the way I used to do it because that's the pattern that they're confident in for their walleye and smallmouth. So these are going to get dipped. You guys have seen that numbers and numbers of times on this channel, so I'm not going to bore you with that. I hope that you have a good day. Try not to go stir crazy. I hope you guys are staying safe and uh, mentally strong. We will get through this. Hopefully we'll come through a little bit tougher. We are much stronger together. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for the view. I really appreciate it. I love seeing all your smiling faces right here on this channel and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.